Hey everybody, intuitive and astrologer Lisa Salvatore here to give you the weekly astrology and energy report for May 15th through May 21st. Today that I am recording this video, it is Sunday, May 14th, and I would just like to wish all of the moms out there a happy Mother's Day and all mother figures. No matter your situation, please take good care of yourself today and hold compassion for yourself because not everybody's mother is here in the physical form and not everybody has a great relationship with their mother. So it's important to acknowledge it all and hold space for yourself. Okay, so let's dive into the energy for this week ahead. It's a big week, dynamic energy. It starts off positive, our ambitions are running high. Monday the 15th, Mars in the last degrees of Cancer is going to harmonize with Neptune in Pisces. And this is a very dreamy, creative, compassionate, spiritual energy. Our creative drive could be in overdrive. Any type of spiritual project, spiritual endeavor, spiritual practice, the energy is ripe for that. It's definitely going to feel motivating toward that direction. It's a wonderful energy to really work on your intuitive abilities if that is something that you're interested in doing, especially automatic writing. So maybe set aside some time in the early evening, do a little meditation, take out your journal, take out a notebook, whatever, and just start to write and see what comes out of you. See what comes through you. That is how you automatic write. And for those that do that anyway, this is a wonderful day for more. And this week also, if you get outside just before sunrise, you can actually see Jupiter re-emerging as a morning star on the eastern horizon. Jupiter is making its yearly shift. Once a year, Jupiter will switch signs. And on May 16th, Tuesday, May 16th, Jupiter is going to move into the sign of Taurus. Jupiter has been in Aries since last May. Jupiter has been in Aries since last May. Jupiter is now moving into Taurus. Now this is a big energy for many reasons. Jupiter is a social planet and Jupiter is all about faith and abundance, expansion. It's also our belief systems, both spiritual and societal. And while Jupiter was in Aries, Aries is a fire sign. So Aries is very action orientated and go, 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 go. It's like our foot is on the gas pedal with Jupiter and Aries. Now Jupiter is moving into the earth sign of Taurus, which is more grounding, more stabilizing and more slow and methodical. It takes a more meticulous approach to things. So Jupiter and Taurus is actually going to be very beneficial. Taurus rules over finances, Taurus rules over the Earth's resources, Taurus rules over the Earth, it rules over what we value. It's also about our stability, our security, our confidence. So while Jupiter is here, we can see and feel a lot of situations surrounding these areas. Also with Jupiter and Taurus for the next year, we're going to feel much more conscious of connecting to the physical because Taurus is all about the physical, the physical Earth the senses, what we can taste, touch, hear, smell, what's tangible, what's practical, what's realistic. So Jupiter is going to put a big picture focus on reality and all of the Taurus areas of life. Biggest emphasis on finances, especially when we're dealing with the collective energy. Jupiter and Taurus is going to be very beneficial, but especially if you are a Taurus, if you have strong Taurus placements. If your Jupiter is in Taurus, you're going to be entering your Jupiter return, which only happens once every 12 years because Jupiter will only go into each sign once every 12 years. There's 12 signs of the zodiac, Jupiter spends one year in each sign. So if your Jupiter is in Taurus, you are having your Jupiter return, which is always a very lovely time, typically a very lovely time. In the lower vibration, Jupiter can lend towards greed, gluttony, too much of a good thing. So we definitely just wanna pay attention and watch out and be careful and conscious as always. But Jupiter does seek to bless us in the area of our chart where Taurus resides for this next year. Now here's the deal. Jupiter enters Taurus on the 16th and then immediately it squares Pluto. It clashes with the planet of power and control. Pluto is at zero degrees of Aquarius. So as Jupiter moves into Taurus, the first move he makes is boom, he clashes right into Pluto. This is power dynamics. These are issues of control and dominance. So think of Jupiter's entrance into Taurus like fireworks. It's a bumpy takeoff, but it more than likely will have a smooth landing. Now the fixed signs are definitely going to feel this the strongest, which are Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius, because Jupiter is in Taurus and Pluto is in Aquarius. And especially if you have anything in the earlier degrees of the fixed signs. And if you don't understand that, don't worry about it. Just try to feel the energy of what I'm saying. Okay, so Jupiter will enter Taurus on the evening of Tuesday the 16th, 9, 10 p.m. Eastern time to be exact. And like I said, right away, Jupiter's gonna clash with Pluto. So I would advise you to connect to your power, absolutely. Connect to your personal power, but live and let live. That's gonna be my mantra for the week, live and let live. There will be a feeling of strong dynamic energy and perhaps a bit of tension. We are absolutely going to see something on the world scale playing out, especially when it comes to the realm of our finances. 
and I'm going to reckon it will probably have something to do with digitization because it's Jupiter in Taurus, Pluto in Aquarius, where we may hear rumblings as Mercury has just stationed direct. We may hear rumblings of information or a snippet of what's to come. And remember, ultimately Jupiter clashing with Pluto pulls a focus onto issues of power and control and dominance. That's the dynamic of this energy. Now, furthering this sentiment as we move throughout the day on the 17th, the moon is going to enter the sign of Taurus and then that moon will join Jupiter and square Pluto. So normally the moon in Taurus is very grounding, but hopefully this will pull that grounding focus onto any potential volatile energy, but it does have the potential to be emotionally volatile on the personal level and absolutely on the collective level. The other thing that's really highlighting this energy of contentiousness and turmoil is that Mars is at the very last degree of Cancer getting ready to shift into the sign of Leo. Leo is also a fixed sign, but once Mars gets into Leo at zero degrees, Mars joins this party and we know what Mars is. Mars is pure drive, force, power. But before we get there, let me just talk about the 18th because we do have some really nice energy in astrology for the 18th and the 19th. But the underlying theme is going to be like right before the water really starts to boil. It's simmering. OK, that's the energy on the 18th. The sun in Taurus lines up nicely with Neptune in Pisces. Again, this is just a very sweet and grounding energy. It reminds us of the good. Our intuition is super strong. This is a great day to get outside and ground yourself to get more connected to the earth because your intuition, like I said, will be really ramped up and you're going to more than likely get some nice epiphanies if that's what you're looking for and if you allow yourself to connect. So I would say in the 18th and 19th, slow down and ground. Take time to get outside and smell the flowers, smell the coffee, whatever it is. And then on the 19th, Mercury is going to harmonize with Saturn and we actually have a lovely new moon in Taurus. So we've got a lot of Taurus energy. Now this is very positive because again, Taurus is a grounded earth sign and Taurus is a fixed earth sign. So when we've got a lot of Taurus energy, we're talking about dogged determination. We're talking about perseverance. We're talking about wanting things to make sense and we want tangible, practical results. And we're typically willing to go the distance and work for that. Now, this new moon is going to fall at 28 degrees and 25 minutes of Taurus. So again, if you have any of the fixed placements, which are Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, especially between 24 and 29 degrees. And then also if you have Gemini, Pisces, Virgo or Sagittarius in the earlier degrees, zero to two degrees, these placements will feel and likely benefit the most from this new moon in Taurus, although everybody will. We've got the sun harmonizing with Mars, which is very, very helpful. We've got Venus harmonizing with Vesta and Mercury, which makes us feel much more connected to that, which makes us feel connected or safe. Taurus is also big on safety. Mercury is now direct and Mercury is harmonizing with the nodal axis with the North node and the South node. Well, actually, Mercury is conjunct the North node and opposite the South node. So we definitely have a bigger vision at this point. We can see things more clearly. I'm hearing the song, I can see clearly now that the rain is gone. That's what this energy can feel like. And we're smelling the earth with that because of the Taurus energy. But I have to mention that Pluto at zero degrees of Aquarius is clashing with the North and South node. So again, this is just power dynamics, power and control. You may find yourself in a situation where somebody's trying to assert their dominance over you or over a specific circumstance, or you may be the one doing that. But either way, there is likely to be some kind of scenario or something that comes up for you that reminds you of an issue of power or powerlessness that you are experiencing in your reality. It will likely be highlighted. But even so, this is a great new moon to ground and to set intentions. But we're likely going to feel the tensions mounting here. But positively speaking, our ambitions can be running really, really high. Our ambition is increasing with the buildup of this energy as Mars is approaching a clash to Pluto. On the 20th, 1131 a.m. Eastern Time, Mars, the planet of drive and force and energy, is going to enter the fire sign of Leo. Mars is fire. Mars is heat. Mars is entering a fire sign. So he's good here, OK? He's ready to rock. And right as Mars enters Leo, he opposes Pluto. It's like a boxing match. Remember, Mars and Pluto are very similar energies. Pluto is actually a higher octave of Mars. So Mars goes about things in a very direct manner where Pluto goes about wanting the same exact thing, wanting the dominance over Mars, but in an indirect manner. So we've got this direct force and then this indirect force, both equally powerful. This is fireworks energy. This is kaboom energy. And when we're dealing with energy like this, Whoever wants their way tends to not care what the other party thinks, what the opponent thinks. Stretch your vision here because this could apply to many different areas. There's definitely a burst forward here. There's a tempo pickup. Watch your surroundings. Watch your own physical energy and vitality. 
watch your temper, extra fighting energy is present here. And there could be a struggle trying to find the middle ground. So it's really important with energy like this to, yes, to be motivated, but also be very honest with yourself about your motivations. Be honest with yourself about your true intentions. Are there power plays here at play? Are there manipulative tactics that you're resorting to? Are you being manipulated potentially? These are things to focus on. These are things to contemplate. Okay, and then we get to the 21st and the sun will enter the sign of Gemini. 3.09 a.m. Eastern time on the 21st, the sun leaves the sign of Taurus and enters the sign of Gemini. And helpfully speaking, the sun will trine Pluto. So we're coming off of that hot energy. We're coming in with a sweet, soft aspect. And the moon will also enter Cancer. So that will kind of help to soften the energy. Although Cancer is also a very emotional and sensitive water sign and can sometimes be crabby. So again, it's just got the potential to be highly volatile and emotional this whole week, but also very motivating. It's contradictory, I know, but it always is. So that's basically the energy of this week ahead. There's a lot of good here. I know it sounds intense and it is, but it always is. And I know that it sounds strong because it is. Look, May is a very dynamic month. June is going to be a very dynamic month. The rest of 2023 is dynamic, but it is promoting a lot of growth. And with all of this Pluto energy, Pluto is also retrograde. So there's something here about diving to the bottom, okay, of the soul of the psyche. This is very psychologically enlightening if we allow it to be. We are getting in touch with our own primal instincts. We're getting in touch with our deepest needs that either have been met, haven't been met. We're recognizing a lot when we're willing to go deep. And that is what this energy is promoting. Again, think about the next year while Jupiter's in Taurus. This is big picture. Look at it from a higher perspective. Look at it as where in my life do I not feel as safe and secure and stable as I wish to be. Really think about that. Check your chart, see where Taurus is. That's the area of life where Jupiter will be transiting for the next year. You could see a lot of goodness come in here. But like I always say when we're dealing with Jupiter, yes, he wants to bless us. I always use the analogy with Jupiter that he is like the uncle that you only see once a year at Christmas time and he visits and he gives you the most amazing gifts because he doesn't see you for the rest of the year. And you love when he visits because you know you're gonna get this amazing you know, energy and these amazing gifts. That is how Jupiter can work for us by where he goes into our chart each year because he will shift, okay? But I wanna also caution, again, Jupiter's a big energy. I always say he's the cosmic magnifying glass. It's like you're holding up your phone and you're zooming in. That's what Jupiter does. So whatever the energy is, Jupiter's gonna blow that up. Jupiter's gonna expand it. So with the good could come the potential negative. So we need to watch again. And Jupiter's all about faith and optimism and hope. So watch your conscience, watch your own energy, pay close attention again to your deepest motivations and why and what you're fighting for, why or what your belief systems are and if and why they're changing. It's important to really look at all of these things because, you know, we're not here to stay the same. We know this, right? We're here to consistently grow into a higher version of ourself every single day. And again, Jupiter and Taurus is a positive energy because it's giving us the chance to ground and to be more honest with ourselves, to be more genuine with ourselves about what it is that we want. So there you have it. That is the energy and the astrology for the week ahead. Again, Mercury is now direct. So the smoke is starting to clear. The smog is starting to clear, but... You know, there is a lot of energy that's also leading to maybe a little bit of confusion. I wouldn't even say confusion. I would say it would be more of a um, like frustrating energy. Like whatever is frustrating you is going to feel even more frustrating this week, especially when it's personal. Okay, so take really good care of yourselves and I will be back with next week's weekly.